I hope you enjoyed the lunch and you have full stomachs uh, because we are going to start uh, with the next talk. Uh, next talk is going to be about data visualization. It will be presented by, by Jan Margeta. Jan is founder of Cardiomy, Pythonista and uh, our long uh, friend because he already did have several talks on Pycon SK in the past. So please give a warm welcome to the Jan. Hi, thank you for coming. It's a pleasure to be here. In the beginning, there was nothing. Then out of nothing, a little dot, a little point appeared. Then another one, and another one. The points started to make friendships. They started to make relations. And soon, a triangle was born. And triangle after triangle, we are getting towards more and more complex geometries. So we combine the world into more and more complex stuff until, well, where's the limit? There's no limit, we get the universe. So uh, yeah, uh, today I would like to talk to you about a really, really cool library that I found on my journey. I'm Jan and I've been doing uh, medical imaging and computer vision for the past 10 years. And PyVista is one of the ways, uh, one of the tools that I found. I really hope that this is something that will be useful to you as well for your, on your 3D visualization journey. So what is uh, PyVista going to allow you to do? PyVista is excellent to visualize 3D data structures, to process your 3D uh, data, and to build 3D enabled apps. What the 3D structures uh, that, and geometries that the PyVista supports, there's a beautif beautiful thing, like uh, you, you, can, uh, you can go from very, very simple things to very complex geometries. PyVista offers a very consistent interface to access them all, access all the power. As a very simple object to, to model, it's for example a sphere. And what could be simpler, like uh, the sphere, we all know what it is. It's a point in space somewhere, the center, that has some radius around it. And uh, to represent the sphere, you need these, these things, a one point and a one radius. And uh, PyVista does not try to complicate it much more than that. And in uh, two lines of code, or one actually, you can get a beautiful 3D rendering of the sphere, including the uh, the properties of the sphere, like you can assign uh, some material properties like specularity and that kind of stuff. What are spheres for? Well, spheres itself uh, can be used for almost anything except for just a point in space. Uh, but it's uh, on itself, on its own, a sphere is in the end just a visualization, it's a 3D point. It can be maybe a planet if you want. How are, so when we combine more spheres together, we get uh, more points. Uh, yeah. And there are more structures that you can build with PyVista. More of these simplest things like cylinders, arrows. For fans of Dungeons and Dragons, you might find some dodecahedrons and that kind of stuff. Uh, platonic solids, you name it, it's there. You can combine stuff with what's, what's already in the library. But then when you combine things, you can then start to compose more, more things. And for example, obtain a point cloud. A point cloud, for example, it can be used. You can use it to, to model your, uh, your particles in the air, for example, to monitor. If you are building a, a flight simulation or if you are tracking flights around the globe, those, all the airplanes are essentially points, points in space. And if you want to, to plot them, it's nothing simpler than that. And I, I personally like to play with my data. I like to uh, pl play and explore. It's actually very nice to feel, which uh, the current libraries don't offer that easily. So like, if, you, if you want to play with Matplotlib, it's all really, really nice. It's a wonderful library. But once you hit the limits, well, then you need to find some, something else. PyVista itself was built around a very, very powerful visualization library called VTK, the Visualization Toolkit. The VTK itself, is, is a great library. For us Pythonistas, 
it might be a bit more difficult to use because it was built for the C++ world where you connect things together, you compile, and then uh, you also get a really, really good performance, but at the same time, a lot of setup and boilerplate code. PyVista does not do any of that. Instead, it all of offers everything behind very simple API that's consistent across all the different structures. For example, meshes now. What, what is a mesh? You can model the, the cloth on your table if you want to see how the textile behave. In your physical simulation, you just place the, the cloth there and uh, simulate, but then you need to visualize it, what happens in a simulation. And there, there's nothing simpler than, than doing that here. And the same thing if you want to do some uh, simulation of a mechanical drum, vibrations, you, or if you want to model, for example, the surface of the car, like after a finish of uh, the paint and a paint job. It's all hidden behind very few lines of code and all very consistent. All objects are essentially uh, inheriting from the same, uh, same uh, master object that, and that one offers like a, just a one single plot functionality that uh, allows you to do all of that behind the scenes. But then the mesh itself is, uh, is really, really cool. But what, what you get out of the visualization of the surface itself is not maybe so much. So if you're modeling, for example, some mechanical structures, and I'm sure some of you do, uh, then, for example, if a bridge will fail or not, and uh, then, again, you want to, to visualize that, and you, you obtain the mesh. But then, how does the mesh look like? What is the strain uh, across the mesh? Is there any weak point? Can you see that? Can you communi com communicate that to other people? Because after all, visualization is about understanding and communicating to others. And so, for example, here we have a little example of a, of a mesh. And this one is a, is a grid. So it's a regular, uh, regular mesh. Again, like I can play with that because it's, it's cool. But beyond that, uh, it is also this kind of mesh is what I see all the time in medical images. Medical images are just volumes. So when you go to an MRI machine or a CT scanner, so for example, down here, you see an example of, a, of an MRI image of, of the thorax, this is the upper part of the body, and that covers the, the area of, of the heart. So the heart is the, the brightish thing that you see on the image in the center, on the bottom. And uh, so this thing that's highlighted on the, on the image is called the atrium. Atrium is the part of the, of the heart that's responsible for carrying the blood, the oxygenated blood from the lungs to the heart, and then the blood pumps uh, from the left ventricle to the body through the aorta. But this is not an anatomy lecture, but already here on the, on the bottom, you might appreciate that from the images it's maybe difficult to see, but when you see like a 3D shape of something, it starts to make more sense. Uh, Loading such an image in PyVista is very intuitive as well. Like there's nothing uh, different for if you load a mesh, if you load an image, it's all hidden behind uh, just one PV read function. And PyVista supports a lot of, uh, of different formats. So who, who of you are using meshes? I'm really sure that your mesh format is already in there. Who are not, and, or if it's not there, but please go ahead and open a PR. It's a very, very simple to add something I have my own right now, and I hope to, be, to have it merged really soon. The people around PyVista are super, super nice. So for me, the medical imaging formats are, for example, the meta-image and uh, NRRD, or Nifty, that is used for brain imaging. So we have the data loaded. Then uh, the plot function of each object is really, really nice because it allows us to quickly see what is happening with the data. So we open an object and we plot. There's nothing quicker than that. Like, the PyVista helps you to minimize the turnaround, like, it really affords you for this iterative exploration of your data sets. But when you have more data, when you have more objects that you want to combine, because after all, the combination of, of objects together, combination of different perspectives on the data, is what will help you get a much nice, uh, stronger insights. And that, therefore, PyVista introduces something that's called a plotter. And a plotter is a, a, a way to visualize multiple objects at the same time. So in MATLAB, some, some of us uh, used uh, this hold-on functionality. So if we want to see more things on the same figure, we do hold-on and uh, then plot some more stuff. In Python, in PyVista, we add all the meshes that we want to show, we add all the images, 
and then we do show. Vivista Plotter also handles the camera for you. Because after all, seeing the object from, from the outside or from one perspective is not enough. And uh, the camera itself, what, what it is? Why do we need a camera? The camera is the way that defines our view. So for example, here on the top, you see like what the camera uh, is in space. So the little dot uh, on the left is the camera position. And the camera defines us like where, where we are looking from, where we are looking to, and it also defines the, the thrust room, the kind of the volume of space that the camera sees. Whatever, whatever is outside is totally invisible to the camera, so it's really good to, to set up the camera properly. But most of the defaults are just fine, usually. If you want to do more, then there is a lot of functionality to change all the different views. You can have uh, multiple views. You can change uh, views to be orthogonal from each side. And so to see the rabbit not only from the side, from the bottom top, as you like. But then uh, what if we have multiple objects? What do we have? Uh, I have often a, the case of having a segmentation of the image. Segmentation is the process of getting the MRI image or CT image of the, of the heart, of the brain, of the, of the ear and op to obtain a 3D model out of that. And so the 3D model is a shape, the input is an image. And there is usually some deep learning involved which converts the, the volume into the shape. And what if I then want to compare? I often want to compare uh, how my method works compared to others, how I work against, uh, am I better than a radiologist? Am I not? Well, th there's a way to, to link the views and uh, actually see them side, side by side, synchronized, synchronized as I scroll through them. And that, that is the best way to highlight what is going on. And this is not what I wanted. Huh. You have a lot of objects, and now how do you want to interact with them? Interaction with the objects by just moving the camera is, is fine, but not enough. So therefore, PyVista offers a lot of tools for, uh, uh, to modify the objects, what is shown in, in real time. There's a concept of widgets that you can attach to the objects, that you can attach to the plotter. So for example, here is a little widget that is uh, about changing the threshold, how the medical image is uh, chosen. So for example, for medical images for CT, the in intensities that are high are usually of something dense, like the bone. Something that is uh, low is soft, like a muscle or some skin or some, uh, some tissue. And so the clinician, the radiologist, then if, if they want to decide what to see, then based on the application, they choose a threshold at which they look at the image. And such a widget is very simple to implement in PyVista. So, and, but also for you, it's very easy. It's very easy to set up what uh, uh, you want to see. PyVista, once we visualize, then uh, the, the other part that it allows us to do, the affordance, is that uh, we don't need to go to any third-party library to modify the data, data. So when we obtain a mesh, for example, the mesh, uh, the, the image might not be smooth enough, there might be holes, there might be some defects. Um, we might want to transmit it over the network, and if it's a two gigabyte file, that's probably not ideal, so we want to compress it, maybe reduce the complexity a little bit, triangulate, slice, whatever, everything is in PyVista included. Uh, Although PyVista itself works really, really beautifully with uh, the ecosystem around it. But composition of objects is, is really useful, especially if we want to cut into something. For example, pr uh, printing a 3D model of the heart, uh, you might f first want to cut it in half so that you see what is inside, and only then you compose it back. So when we have the model manipulation, the other thing is like to compute some measures. For example, like the strain of the, of the mechanical model, we want to see where it is uh, the most uh, stressed, the, the particle. But also, for example, to compute the mesh properties, like the curvature. So over here, we have a little rabbit. And the rabbit itself is, uh, is pretty bluish on the regions where the rabbit is smooth. So that means curvature means smooth. Higher curvature means something that's really sharp. So if we want to detect something that uh, is really sharp, for example, we are, uh, we are working for an automate uh, a car maker, and we want to be sure that uh, some part in the car is not too edgy, 
the, the, car, is the, the color on the car is not uh, too distorted. There are no defects. Maybe there's a way to compute the curvature. There are other measures to compute as well. Uh, adding, adding these kind of measures to the visualization is nothing, nothing more than just assigning, assigning uh, that value to the, almost like a dictionary. We, the object behaves like a dictionary, and we assign it to that. And then we choose what we visualize. Of course, for me, myself, again, I love medical imaging. And seeing the image from the outside is completely useless. Therefore, you want to slice the image a lot. You want to see what is inside. You want to cut it in different planes, orthogonally or not. And uh, there are tools built in. You can, if you know the orientation, you want to look at the image. There is nothing more uh, that is simpler than uh, specifying the, the, the normal, the essentially the, the vector, the, the orientation of the plane, and uh, where it is positioned. And then we can cut the image as we like. So, for example, here is an image of, uh, of a human cochlea. Cochlea, cochlea is the, the part of our ear, uh, inner ear. It's a, it's a hearing organ. And uh, this organ is responsible for uh, transmitting. Uh, so there's the eardrum that you probably all know. And then it goes through the ossicles, like uh, the three smallest bones in our body. And then it goes uh, to the, uh, the so-called round window to transmit the vibrations into the cochlea. So the mechanical waves from the outside go into our own ear. And that, that part that processes the mechanical waves is the cochlea. And so this is an important challenge for cochlear implant makers to help uh, people with uh, hearing difficulties, like how to place uh, the implant, where to place it, what is the best strategy to go into the cochlea. And th that's, for, th that's why it's important to be able to identify the cochlea before on the images. I will later show you a 3D demo of this thing, uh, but uh, for now, let's see what are the outputs, so we, what you can get out of uh, PyVista. So the outputs are pretty standard in a sense, so that you can get all the meshes, you can get all the scenes. But also what is uh, quite cool is really uh, that you can get uh, like HTML files, standalone HTML files. So if you want to share your models with someone, uh, you can embed that HTML into your slides. For example, like I'm doing here, that's in an iframe. Uh, and uh, you can export that as an STL or object file so that you can send it to a 3D printer, whatever you like. You can make your own 3D collection of, of tools and, uh, and print, print it at home. But of course, if you want to make animations, pretty 3D is always nice to show. Uh, there is a possibility to do that. PyVista itself runs in almost anything. You can run it in scripts, Jupyter Notebooks, uh, the panel, uh, VS Code, or uh, as, uh, as Christian was mentioning two days ago and yesterday, that Qt is a very cool way to build applications that are multi-platform. And uh, combining PyVista, uh, PyQt, and PyInstaller, you can make standalone 3D enabled apps. What can you build with uh, 3D enabled apps? I, I can imagine lots of my stuff, like for the medical imaging and, or not, but then making your home more 3D modeled, who knows? Well, putting it all together is like an example of the synchronized views for medical imaging where we can, we can see like the, the mesh, the cutting of the image, and uh, and the cochlea inside of the, of, the, of the volume. So you can probably appreciate now much, much better that the 2D slices of the volume are not enough, that it would be really difficult to plan the surgery. But when you know how this thing looks like in 3D, you can then uh, do much, much less harm when you're entering the ear. And this is kind of like a little application that you can build uh, in uh, not much time. Also, it's fairly straightforward to integrate such an application and make a a uh, little web app, like for example, here is it's interactive. So here I have a little application that uh, is running on a, on a tiny backend that sends back the HTML file that is then replaced. And uh, with that, it's possible to achieve, I'm gonna make this like a normal normal view because it's not working well. So we can try to change the other stuff, render. 
render different things. Like I prepared a couple of objects that you can render, like, like a cylinder, but also there are different things. Like you can render the queen of, of Egypt, for, former queen of Egypt, the Nefertiti. And I do believe that she's going to appear momentarily. Of course, we don't have any light, so adding a light is nothing simpler than just uh, adding a property to the plot function. So we add a light, we get an Nefertiti like that. And imagine how would she look like if she were a metallic, uh, um, metallic statue. So we try, for example, a physical rendering. So physical rendering is a nice feature of uh, PyVista if you want to generate some really cool and beautifully looking, uh, looking figures of physical objects. So this kind of actually looks like metallic. As I mentioned, uh, Qt together with PyVista and PyInstaller make really uh, simple uh, 3D enabled apps. So I wonder if, uh, I, I'm quite curious who, who will bring what to the market with these. This is after all an, a very exceptional ecosystem and PyVista plays so, so well with all the other players in the, uh, in the field. The VTK itself um, works straight out of the box. The objects themselves can be passed to VTK because the, it's a very thin, thin wrapper. NumPy, PyVista, X-Array, and uh, so on, many, many others that are working well in concert with PyVista. To me, the easiest way is to start with Docker that sets up all the environment, but after all, uh, PIP is uh, just fine as well. So why don't you give uh, PyVista a try today? Uh, PyVista itself um, is nothing like the other libraries that we're using, like Matplotlib, Seaborn, and Bokeh, because it, it, it's just fun. It, uh, it, gives, it, it opens this new space of 3D. At least it did to me. Uh, and it contains so many wonderful examples to try out straight out of the box. It's so much fun to explore and play with the data that I hope that you're going to try that as well. It's really good for this iterative analysis that I had. And uh, the, I do like how the approach was to make the UX really consistent so we don't need to learn much. It fits really my brain. It fits my brain and I don't need to think what to type because whether I work with images or meshes, it's still the same function. Just the output is different. And after all, it's open to all of you. It's right now on GitHub. Go ahead, play with that. And uh, I'm really happy to hear what you built. What is the point that you are going to place in the previously empty space? Thank you. Uh, thanks. We have uh, two questions, so I will read it. Uh, does PyVista allow to interact with uh, GLSL compute shade shaders, access buffers directly to generate mesh data on the fly? I don't think so, but I don't know. Okay. And the second is, can I use PyVista for interactive visual uh, interactive visualization of a 3D laser scanned object. Uh, by interactive, I mean to highlight, annotate specific points. Uh, absolutely. Could I maybe share a little example from the, uh, from the PyVista docs? I think there is a little example. It's called like laser scanner. And that's where actually the point, uh, point cloud is useful for, for PyVista. Uh, and the point cloud itself uh, is not only good for these uh, kind of uh, laser scanners, for LIDARs, uh, but also for these, these kind of other applications. Uh, I think it's called laser, LIDAR, LIDAR laser. So there's a... A little example where you can download. Uh, so, this is how it essentially behaves. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to go into the details, but it's, it's essentially here. 
Oh, this is just downloading the example. Uh, so this is how it looks look like, and uh, since I'm not in a notebook, I will just say notebook false. So this is a little data set that is from a, uh, from a laser scan. And then uh, in your data set, uh, you There is a little thing called like point array, for example, point data, and you can get all the elevation information, and then you can filter filter based on that, based on the information inside. So you can filter anything you like, and you can highlight the regions that matter to you. And if I have the, the opportunity, I will then uh, show an example of a re, uh, of what a widget would be. For example, this is a uh, a widget that uh, integrates a couple of checkboxes, and uh, with these checkboxes, you can then, for example, interactively control what is uh, shown on the scene. So here we have a couple of, uh, of blue spheres, not spheres, and we can turn them on and off. But also, so that same thing can be applied, like to change properties of the of the of the spheres, to add more. Okay, thank you, Jan, for your talk and answering, answering the questions. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Mikrobit je programovateľný milý počítač, ktorý ti dovolí prepojiť informatiku s kreativitou. Dá sa programovať veľmi jednoducho a ovládať tak, aby robil presne to, čo chceš. O pár minút sme zvládli rozsvietiť vlastný obrázok na displeji a o chvíľu sme už obrázky diálkovo prepínali druhým mikrobitom. Mikrobit má v sebe aj super vychytávky, ako sú tlačidlá, senzor pohybu, kompas a teplomer. K mikrobitu ale môžeš pripojiť množstvo ďalších vecí. Tu programujeme, aká animácia sa nám má ukázať na LED pásiku. Ja som na ňom naprogramovala dúhu. Teraz programujeme podľa nôd kohútika Jarabého. Najlepšie na mikrobite je, že si viem vytvoriť napríklad blikajúceho robota alebo gitaru, ktorú ovládať tak, že ňou zatraciem, alebo futbalovú bránku, kde mi mikrobit počíta, koľko gólov som dala, alebo kúlové svietiace topánky a tisíc ďalších vecí, ktoré ešte len vymyslím. Mikrobit je hračka, ktorú schováš do dlane a vytvoríš z nej čokoľvek. Tak čo s ňou spravíš ty? Každých 60 sekúnd si 28 tisíc ľudí predplatí službu Netflix. Odošle sa 197 miliónov e-mailov, stiahne sa 414 tisíc aplikácií a ukradne niekoľko tisíc hesiel. Na internete sa toho deje veľa. A všetko najdôležitejšie sa dozviete na Živé SK. Živé SK. Technológie ľudskou rečou.